This week, conflict zone is in the West Bank city of Ramallah, and my guest is the Prime Minister, Rami Hamdallah. The peace process with Israel is in deep freeze, and with almost daily stabbings of Israelis by Palestinians, it's hard to see how it can be restarted. So is this troubled land slipping once again into war? Prime Minister, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. Your government has failed to make any moves towards a peace process with Israel, failed to effectively unify with Hamas. Does your government deserve to survive? Actually, we have to start with the peace track. You know, the peace track in Palestine is dealt with by the PLO. And we as a government, we adopt always the program of the PLO. Uh, but you have okay, collectively, you have failed to make any inroads, any progress on the peace actually process. Actually, you have to look for uh, the impediments, uh, which is actually here, Israel, actually. We have been occupied for almost uh, 51 years. Uh, we are seeking uh, freedom and justice. Uh, we are adopting non-violent resistance. And we ask Israel to apply all UN resolutions. Uh, and you are hopelessly with, disunited at the same time. Let me finish here. We hope that Israel will apply, first of all, all UN resolutions uh, which call upon Israel uh, to withdraw from our land and uh, to establish our Palestinian independent uh, sovereign state. But look what the Israelis are doing on a daily basis, you know, with uh, the two states' vision, actually. We talk about independent, uh, viable Palestinian state over the 67 borders with East Jerusalem as our capital. But the expansion of settlements on a daily basis, actually, Prime Minister, it kills, actually, it kills the viability of a Palestinian state. I understand. Pr Prime Minister, how are the Israelis supposed to make peace with the Palestinians when the Palestinians are so disunited? If they make peace with Fatah, they're not going to be able to have peace with Hamas. Are they? As you know, sir, the PLO is the sole representative of all Palestinians. That's here. fine in theory, but it doesn't work in practice, does it? As you well know. Uh, actually, this is out of context. You know, in 1994, it was the PLO uh, which reached the agreement with Israel. If you remember the Oslo Accords, it was signed between uh, the PLO you and Israel. You are fatally disunited. Actually, as, as actually, a Palestinian movement, you are fatally disunited. But at this time, actually, actually Netanyahu has been using this actually as a means for not uh, reaching an, agree an agreement. Well, he's right, but, but, isn't he? No, he's, he's right. Not, he's right. But, but uh, before 2007, you are disunited. Before, before 2007, weren't we united? We were united actually. Uh, but now we are doing our best actually to reach a unity government. Uh, Hamas is invited. Uh, You've been doing your best for a long time, but it doesn't get anywhere, think, think, does it? You've been trying to unify for years. We have, we have, uh, and not, it doesn't work. We should not lose hope. Uh, we keep it trying. And now there are serious talks actually between Fatah and Hamas to unite. There have been serious talks for years, Prime Minister. Let's hope. You know, for the last 10 years, you've been having serious talks and they get nowhere. Why? Why can you not, in the interests of the Palestinian people, put aside your differences? You know, my government is called a consensus uh, government. Uh, we are trying our best uh, to reunite. Uh, we are doing our. It's in name only. Consensus no, no. in name only, not we, in fact. Uh, look at the reconstruction actually in Gaza. Who is doing the reconstruction now? It is the government. It's my government so far. How much reconstruction is going on in Gaza? Okay. Very little. No, no, very little no, no. compared to what is needed. You need the statistics or you need words? No, but very, we, we, very little. No, we have, very we, little. We have repaired 98,000 homes which were partially demolished by the Israelis. We have started with 5,000 units which were fully demolished. And remind you, you know, we had uh, the reconstruction conference in Cairo and the pledges were around uh, $5 billion. Only 28% of the pledges actually uh, were fulfilled. Prime Minister, your opinion polls by Palestinian organizations show a population that is moving towards support of an armed intifada. Growing numbers of people want to see an armed intifada again. Can you stop that? Or is that inevitably where the situation is headed? Actually, our commitment is for uh, one non-violent resistance. Uh, we should achieve uh, our goals. This is our commitment. This is the leadership. But this is not what your people are saying to the opinion polls. This is the leadership uh, commitment. This is uh, my government commitment to reach a settlement uh, with Israel uh, through peaceful means. But you're but, a weak, but, you're a weak government, but, aren't but, you? But you're a weak look, government. Look at what the Israelis are doing, actually. I talk to the Israelis about look, what they're doing. Look, I'm talking to you about what you do. Look at what the Israelis are doing. You know, you ask about the individuals, okay, about the people. When you look at, you know, the daily killings, the extrajudicial killings, which happening on a daily basis, 
If you look at demolition of homes... What about the Palestinians who are stabbing Israelis you, on a daily you, basis? If we're actually, talking about daily if you, if killings... You, if, you, if, you, if you see the transfer of people from certain places to another, which is actually, you know, in contradiction with the international law, look at all these activities which are done by the Israelis on a daily basis. Actually, you have entire generation of Palestinians who live the whole of their lives under occupation. Prime Minister, this wasn't, this wasn't the question we, we are, I was we are, asking we are, you. I'm telling you we are committed. I understand, are, but this we, wasn't the question that I was we, asking we you. We are committed, sir, to non-violent resistance. This is But you are weak. Policy. You are a weak government. In the, in the opinion polls that were carried out January this year by the Arab World for Research and Development, 33% said you are weak. This is the predominant feeling about you and your government, weakness. So you can't stop the slide towards an intifada, can you? I, 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 I can't tell you, actually. Our path is uh, peaceful means. Uh, Israel has to abide by the international law. This is the only viable way, actually, to Israel, for Israel to apply the international I'm law. I'm asking what you comply, can do, to... and you keep turning it around to Israel. I yes. ask the Israelis what the Israelis are doing. I'm asking you what you are doing. Let's, How can you stop this slide this, towards the intifada? Let's talk about facts. We need a political horizon. This is the fact, actually. You need a political... You need a political horizon. You have to give our people hope, actually. We have been under occupation for 51 years. In you don't give them hope. You slide them towards uh, intifada. This is the way they are going. There should be... Israel has been all the time talking about economic developments here and there. But this is... We don't need this, actually. What we need, we need a political horizon, which gives hope to our uh, children. When I talk about the uh, entire generation who have lived their lives under occupation, 60% of the people have not lived Gaza, actually. They have not lived Gaza for a while. Imagine. What would you call uh, the seas on Gaza? The closure in Gaza, which has been for almost eight years now. Let's talk about the political horizon within the Palestinian territories. As things stand, you have a president who is 11 years into what is supposed to be a five-year term. The lack of effective oversight on the president has meant years of shady dealing at the heart of government, hasn't it? No reforms, nepotism, corruption has been rampant in the Palestinian Authority, hasn't it? That's the political horizon that you offer your people here. Look, it's not great, is it? This is actually not the truth, actually. This is uh, completely uh, unfair. It's, it's unfair. It comes from Palestinian, uh, 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 Palestinian uh, uh, sources, unfair. Palestinian human actually, rights. Actually, in, in Palestine, we created institutions actually uh, based on transparency and accountability. Not according we, to the chairman we, of the Accountability we, we, and Integrity we, we, Coalition. We, we have uh, the Public Audit uh, Bureau. We have the Anti-Corruption Committee. But as, as in any uh, country, actually, in any institution, you find people, actually, who have certain misconducts. And these people, actually, are followed up by our uh, committees and Prime institutions. Prime Minister, Abdel Qadar al husseini is the chairman of the Coalition for Accountability and Integrity. He said that with... Without a reactivation of the Legislative Council, which you don't have, he said, without it, your much-heralded anti-corruption drive will continue to limp. Absolute power, he said, means absolute corruption. This is and that's what you have. This is actually... Absolute power and absolute no, corruption. No, 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 this is not the truth, actually. Well, so he's lying, is he? I, I, I'm not saying that, but... Uh, Abdel Qadar al Hussein is lying. Actually, what we are saying, actually, that we have uh, bodies that follow up any charges against anyone, and we investigate. And actually, we are proud, actually, of the transparency and accountability. Look at this person, what is he saying, actually? If in, in, in another country, maybe he cannot make these statements. Less actually. than a year ago, the Palestinian Coalition for Accountability and Integrity flagged up its own concerns. It said, failure to adopt a national comprehensive and participatory plan against corruption. Concerns that the Ministry of Finance has ceased to disseminate budgets and data. An ongoing rise in official salaries in state institutions, a declining number of reports being published by the State Audit and Administrative Control Bureau. And you talk about transparency yes, and anti-corruption drive. I talk, look, look it, at the, it's at odds with the look, facts look at the report which, has recently, which are being given by your but, independent bodies. But look at the reports which have uh, recently published by the EU, for instance, by the IMF, by the World Bank. I don't know why you're citing just uh, what okay. you wanted. Well, let's talk about the you're EU. You, you're let's talk about the EU because Federica oh, Mogherini... Only, yes, she... only yesterday there was a statement by the EU saying how transparent uh, 
our Minister of Finance is. Well, I don't know who was speaking, but, but let me tell you, when, 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 when Federica Mogherini gave you 250 million euros at the start of this month, she said Palestinian institutions must become more transparent, more accountable, and more democratic. Viable and inclusive institutions based on respect for the rule of law and human rights are crucial in the establishment of an independent and sovereign Palestinian state. So she felt the need on 1st of March, a few days ago, to remind you that accountability, transparency, and honesty are essential. We are accountable. That's not exactly a we ringing are, we, endorsement we, we, of your government. We are it? accountable, uh, we are transparent, and the, 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 the money you just mentioned, it is the contribution of the EU for a whole year, actually. Yes. Some of it will go to our salaries, uh, some of it uh, will go to our uh, projects. And this is audited on a monthly basis by the So EU. why is she saying Palestinian institutions must become more transparent, more accountable, but, and more democratic? But I wanted, Her words. I, I, wanted you to Her look, words. I wanted you to look at the report which was published only yesterday in the press by the EU, which talks about how transparent and how accountable we are. But here I think Ms. Morgarini is saying about... Uh, the new pledge, actually, which is around uh, 252 million, which is, uh, which is supposed uh, to be dispersed in 2016. Some of it, uh, it will go to our uh, salaries, some of it will uh, go to our projects. But we are committed, we are open. Azmi Shahabi, senior official of your accountability watchdog, said there are big black holes in the Palestinian financial and administrative system that need to be addressed. He said various public departments have become private kingdoms. Big black holes and private kingdoms. Actually, That's what your independent watchdogs are telling you. Actually, and you say it's nonsense. Actu actually, you say it's nonsense. Actually, this is not a fact. This is not a fact. So how has he got it so wrong? Uh, this is not a fact. How has he got it you so wrong? You, ha you have to look into other reports. You have to look into other reports, uh, like uh, the Anti-Corruption Committee, which is run by independent body in Palestine. And to see how transparent the other reports show that two attempts last August created a huge stir here. Two attempts by Palestinian officials to misuse funds. One was a request signed by a diplomatic advisor to the president who asked Bahrain's foreign minister for $4 million to fund the private housing complex here. And another showed a senior official from the Borders Authority trying to get you to pay $15,000 for his family's health and education expenses. Uh, this is the kind of corruption that uh, is happening uh, on a uh, daily actually, basis, actually, isn't actually, it? This is proved to be false, actually. Somebody wrote a letter asking for 15,000, yes, but nobody has paid him, actually. But uh, anyone in a democratic nation can write to the prime minister and can write to the president requesting certain things. But it doesn't mean that we will uh, respond to his uh, letter. And this is what happened, actually. But people can write whatever they want. They can request whatever they want. People but have legitimate demands here, like your teachers, for instance. Public schools have been on strike for a month. And yet you crack down on teachers. You're the one who said the Palestinian teacher deserves our respect and yes, admiration. Yes, for sure. But, um, you meet them, but you meet them with riot police, threats of arrest, threats of being sacked again, again, and overnight detentions. Again, again, this is how you show again, your admiration. I, I myself am a teacher. Originally, I became from a teacher background. The president is a teacher. We highly respect our teachers and our investment. So you meet them with riot police when let, they have let, legitimate demands. Let me finish, please. Uh, actually, we are investing in human resources and we value uh, the work for our teachers. I, I wish you were here last Tuesday when thousands of teachers uh, demonstrated here in the front of my office and nobody intervened with well, them. Well, I read one of their comments. Last month, a secondary school teacher from Bethlehem attended a protest demonstration. She told one of your newspapers, we passed four checkpoints, policemen, intelligence, army, and they asked if we were teachers or not, and we had to lie just to pass but as I if we were criminals, she said. Let as if we were criminals. I can confirm that thousands of people arrived in the front of my office. This would not happen in too many countries, actually. They came into here, they protested, they stood for uh, hours. Even they closed the whole street and no army intervened. And even, you know, uh, I tell you an example actually of what happened uh, last Tuesday. Teachers distributed flowers to the security who were guarding the demonstration. Where this will happen? And this is a fact. I saw it myself. 
your action was denounced by the Palestinian Center for Human Rights. It was denounced. The security measures that you took, the attempts to stop teachers reaching the demonstrations, attempts to stop them coming into Ramallah. But they came actually, Why? But Why? They, but they well, they came, came anyway. But they came actually. This and is, these are the largest they, demonstrations in the West Bank for 20 years. This is, you know, for 20 years. actually the fact is that uh, thousands of them arrived here. They said what they wanted. And it is actually, though the strike actually is not legal because it had uh, to go through certain uh, procedures actually. Even though we accepted that, uh, we respected uh, their being here. And uh, I think, uh, you know, human resources are the most valuable issue for and us. And none of them are going to be sacked for taking part in not, the demonstrations? None of them, uh, none of them has been even detailed. Yes, they have. 22 were detained overnight. None of them, I, I can confirm, none of them has been detained. They were so the reports are all false. They, 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 they were the detainees uh, three weeks ago when there was incitement and they were released the second day. There were 16 of them released immediately after uh, one night. I can confirm this. Why do you crack down on free speech here? You say you allow demonstrators to demonstrate. You say that... Uh, Give me an example you, you where we crack on free well, speech. Last year, freedom, Just an example. Last year, Freedom House reported that several media outlets are routinely pressured to provide favorable coverage of the PA and Fatah. Journalists who criticize the PA or Fatah face arbitrary arrest, threats, and physical abuse, according to Freedom House. You uh, don't recognize this? Mistakes can happen anywhere. They, they can happen in Germany, they can happen in here, but if anyone... Okay, one, These are a bit more than mistakes. It, it, this sounds like a policy, it, doesn't it? it? The Palestinian no, no. Center for Development no, 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 and Media it. Freedoms reported last year 38 press freedom violations by Palestinian forces in the West Bank in the first half of 2014. This is, this is not our policy. I have to make sure. But it happens, doesn't it? It happens as everywhere, actually, and usually we investigate. Well, it doesn't happen everywhere. We, we, We're talking about what happens we, here. We usually, we investigate any incident, actually, that happens, actually, and we can bring anyone uh, to trial, actually, if really he commits mistakes. In the West Bank, 37 arrests and 24 summonses were based on Facebook protests, comments, even so-called people putting a like onto the Facebook page. And these were perceived to be critical of the PA, so there were 37 arrests and 24 summonses. I, Why? I, I, I can tell you, actually, and this is a fact, we are proud of the democracy we practice in Palestine. People can say anything, can criticize me, can criticize so, the president. So Freedom House is look, wrong. Look, All look, your critics look, are wrong. Look, 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 look at the newspapers, look at the websites, actually. I wish you could just go through certain uh, Palestinian websites and see what the people are writing and what they're saying. We never can I try anyone for what he says or what he speaks, actually. And there's no torture in the West Bank being uh, carried out? I cannot deny that sometimes, you know, certain incidents happen. And uh, this is the fact that we investigate these. And anyone really who is tried, anyone who is charged with the torture, actually, will be tried. Prime Minister Amnesty International, in its latest report for 2015-2016, says torture and other ill-treatment of detainees remained common and was committed with impunity by Palestinian police and other security forces in the West Bank. Actually, this is, this is not the policy. But it happens. This is, it happens. I tell you, this happens on an individual basis. Sometimes mistakes happen. Prime right? Minister, I've been asking questions in, in Palestine about torture in your detention facilities for the last 25 years. And every time I ask these questions, somebody says, we're working on it and it's a few no, no, cases this is, and this kind of thing. But it doesn't change, does it? No, you, no, said, you said before no, we started no, the interview no, no, that nothing changes no, 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 here. No, no, this doesn't no, change, no, does no, it? No, no, no. Nothing changes with regard to the Israeli occupation. Nothing changes but, with regard but, to but corruption have, and torture we, 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 in the Palestinian but, but, authority. Actually, we are proud of the democracy we have. Uh, we are... Uh, well, actually Actually, this is why we keep saying investment in Palestine, investment in peace, is investment in democracy and stability. Look at Palestine. Palestine is a model for tolerance, for coexistence. Look at Muslims, Christians, Samaritans uh, live as one family. Why you look at you know the certain uh, malforms, uh, incidents that happened here and there? Things can happen anywhere. I don't deny that certain things happen. Actually, torture happens, but this is not the policy. Once we discover then you're not bringing to account those what? who carry out course, the torture, are you? Of course. How many people are charged? Course. How many people have you charged? I tell you only last, last, many? last year only, right? Eight persons were tried. That's it? Just I, eight? I, I'm the Minister of Interior also, in my capacity, actually. Eight people were tried and sacked from the service, actually. I tell you. For torture? Some of them, yes. 
But when you talk about eight persons, it's not that huge number actually. It's not. It's not that huge number. We are against it, but if you look at you know, eight persons. Israel's main problem with you is incitement, isn't it? Israel's Deputy Foreign Minister, Tsipi Hotovli, spoke in January of a direct relationship between the Palestinian who stabbed a 39-year-old mother to death in front of her children in January and incitement from the Palestinian media. Why do you allow incitement in your media? But uh, why don't you talk about the Israeli incitement? No, no, I am talking what, about what, yours. What, I talk what, to the Israelis what, why, why about what about they do, but, but let, it's let, not an answer to the question. Let, let me explain again. We are committed to non-violent resistance. Incidents happen by individuals. Why do you when allow I told you when, incitement when I, on are, your television we, channels? We are committed. We always say that, uh, the, the president and myself, we always say that we are committed to non-violent resistance. This is our part. But, but you broadcast a music video calling but, on Palestinians but if you to look, drown them, the Jews, in a sea of blood and kill them as you wish. I, I tell you. Why? I tell you, you have entire nations who have, who, many of them have lived their entire lives under occupation. When these people suffer collective punishment, when these people see their homes demolished. Is that a reason to Israel, allow incitement, is, is, Israel, Prime Minister? Israel, Israel pushes these people towards Is that a reason to allow incitement? We have to see a political horizon. We have to give these people, these young generations, we have to give them hope. Is that a reason to allow incitement we to drown the Jews in a sea of blood and kill them as you wish? This is what's broadcast we, on your media. We, no, no, no. We don't allow incitement. This is not uh, really the fact. So she got it wrong. The deputy she, foreign minister got it I wrong. I think she always gets it wrong, actually. If, once she described Palestinians as snakes, such as Palestinian children as snakes, isn't this incitement? If you look at Israel... But I'm asking... I if asked you, the if, Israelis about what they do. I'm asking you about what you do. I, I tell you our commitment is to non-violent resistance. This is our commitment. Our so why so commitment. many stabbings then by Palestinians taking place on a daily basis? There were reports of two more you know attacks where, just, just before we came in and sat down. You know where down. these stabbings occur? They occur inside Israel proper. And this is not under our control. Israel really has to look for... You don't condemn them, do you? Israel has you to... Offer, you offer, in fact, you uh, offer understanding no, no, for we, them, we, don't you? We are, we are against, right, any violations anywhere. We are... Your chief negotiator, Mr. Arakat, Saab Arakat, describes them as people who lost hope and were deprived of their future. He offers understanding for cold-blooded murder. Is, this is... Why don't you condemn these stabbings? Well, I'm, saying, I'm already saying that we are committed to non-violent resistance. This is but you're our, not saying I condemn is, these people for is, stabbing this is, innocent people. This is, this is our commitment, actually. We are against, we are against any violent action anywhere. Actually. And you condemn we people are, who go and kill we, innocent we are, we are, Israelis? We, we are, what about, you know, the 100... Listen, 186 Palestinians have been killed since October the 1st, and many of them are children and women. Only on the Women's Day, a mother of five children was killed, actually. What do you call this? What do you call it? It's in, not in, up to me. In, I'm in, asking in, you in, as in, Prime Minister. In, in, I'm asking what, you, what you I'm call asking it. You. What you call it when Palestinians stab innocent Israelis. I'm telling you... What do you call that? I, I am telling you but that... But you won't answer. People... You have, won't answer people, me. No, no, I'm, I'm answering you. As a government, as a leadership, our commitment is to non-violent resistance. This is our message to our people. Non-violent resistance, we, but not to peace. We, we want... But not to peace. Reaching peace, yes. non -violent. This is what we want, actually, to reach peace. What is going to unblock the stalemate that we have at the moment and lead to peace? What can you do? You, I know you put the, the, the onus on the Israelis, but what can you, the Palestinians, do to advance a peace process? You know, if you look in the past, how difficult compromises we made through the Oslo Accords, and we are still committed to reach really a historical political settlement uh, with Israel, based on the UN resolutions and based on the two-state vision. A two-state vision that is losing popularity among your citizens here? I think that Israel, actually Israel is responsible for that. When people see these daily killings, the demolition of homes, uh, closure on Gaza, collective punishments, transfer of people from one place to another, which is...
you know, this is in contradiction with the international law. Actually, when you is, is your government, is the Palestinian Authority going to collapse because Israel is making plans on think, the basis that it will collapse? I, I think is the, it going to collapse? I, I think the PA is strong, actually. It, 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 it will not collapse. Uh, our people are in line with us, actually. And uh, we are committed uh, to our goals. And this is actually uh, an achievement that will not allow it to collapse, actually. But we will be doing it, actually. We started our institutions, and we are prepared for the state. And I wanted to remind you of a World Bank report, which says Palestinian institutions right now are much better than the institutions in 80 countries which were found before us. What do you call this? We are ready for the state, actually. All right. And this is the solution. Prime Minister, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.